Hey, Forge fans, it's the Forge Audio Network, and we are focusing on Forge. Uh, we're going to check in with Adam Jenkins, who's soccer commentator uh, with One Soccer. We're going to hear from Forge FC head coach and technical director, Bobby Smirniotis. And we're going to hear from T uh, Tristan Henry, goalkeeper for Forge FC. We are here in our Hamilton studios, uh, th which also doubles as the cat room in my home. Yes, the cats have their own room. It'd be weird if they didn't. Um, and Forge FC coming off what the club has called their worst half of football since Forge FC's inception. So three and a half years, worst half they've ever played. That was that first half against CF Montreal in the quarterfinal of the Canadian Championship. Uh, Forge went on to lose that match 3-0. Uh, the second half, Forge was better. They battled, but ultimately it, it just wasn't enough. I mean, to be able to come back from that kind of deficit on the road against an MLS club like Montreal, who's, who is the best MLS club, uh, Canadian MLS club at the moment, um, it was just too tall of a task for Forge. But they can reset, refocus on domestic play, and on their 2020 Canadian Championship final, which will be held next Saturday against Toronto FC at Tim Hortons Field in Hamilton. But we're not going to jump ahead. In fact, that's been a theme this week. Not jumping ahead. Coach Bobby has instructed his guys, not that they needed it, but just a reminder, they have a game against Edmonton coming up on Tuesday on the road against an Edmonton squad that, yes, if we look at the table, they are at the bottom, but they have given clubs trouble all season. And I know it sounds funny to say, but they've been able to pick up points in spots no one expected them to. And that could have to do with the fact that teams might be overlooking Edmonton. They're a young squad, a lot of players getting time that they wouldn't have maybe gotten in other clubs and they're taking the advantage of it. And listen, they're, they're playing for their jobs. Coaches are playing for their, everyone is playing for something here, playing for pride. Whatever the case is, either these are professionals and they're at home. Very difficult place to play for a visiting team. And uh, Forge, this, you don't want to say must win because, I mean, it's not a must win in a literal sense. But based on what happened last game against Montreal and the fact that Forge was coming off their best performance in a long time against Halifax, where they won in Halifax 4-0, uh, it just, I, we've said this before, number one rule of sports, it's never as bad or as good as it seems. And I mean, what an example. Maybe one of the best games we've seen Forge play against Halifax and their worst the following week. It's the nature of the sport and you don't expect Forge to overlook Edmonton at all. But just to make sure, the club is just emphasizing. And there's a lot of media attention too. You know, I spent time down at Tim Hortons Field watching training, talking to the guys, uh, there's more media there than usual from media outlets that have never covered the CPL before. Why? Because Forge is playing Toronto FC in uh, in a little over a week. So it's, it's hard not to get caught up in all of that. And Forge is going to do their best to stay focused on Edmonton. And that is the uh, was the emphasis from Coach Bobby, who I spoke to. And uh, here's what he had to say about uh, this week's training following a very disappointing loss against Montreal. I think we had an excellent training session today, to be honest. Uh, you know, Wednesday wasn't an, uh, an easy one for us, uh, not uh, with the result, but mostly with the performance. But I think the guys uh, understand that, and they've come out today, and they've been excellent in training. So, so how do you take lessons from that, but also look ahead to the next game? Like, I know you, you don't want to focus on the last game, but you need parts of that to get better as well. So what's the balance there? Yeah, I think it's pretty simple. If, uh, if you look at each and every player, they know that that wasn't our best performance. They know what needs to, needs to be better. Um, we've discussed that already, and uh, then it's out of the way. You know, it's as, as simple as that. Edmonton is a, is a different opponent, and we get prepared for them coming up on Tuesday. Yeah, and a lot of focus, understandably, is, is on Toronto, but obviously it's important to stay focused on, on the next match, I would assume. Yeah. The, the most important match is Edmonton. Uh, you know, Toronto will be a focus on Wednesday of next week. You know, up till now it's three points against Edmonton. That's the most important thing. Once we get past that, that's always been our motto around here. We'll get ready for that fire next match that will be against Toronto. Yeah, you know, training, let's say it was very intense this week. Um, heated at times, but not 
not in a bad way, in a way that guys look, they look angry, but like an angry that you know that they know they can play better and that they want to play better and they don't want to lose and especially not lose in the way they did. It's a good sign. It was a very intense practice this week and um, it shows how much the guys care. It's, I mean, it's what you're looking for as a coach for sure. And uh, I caught up with the keeper who... I, I said this, it's not often that a team can lose 3 nothing, and after the match, we're talking about how good the keeper was. Tristan Henry, Henry was really good against Montreal. Unfortunately, he didn't have a ton of help. Uh, he made some really big saves and avoided a, a bigger gap in that final score, and uh, I was able to catch up with Tristan Henry, and he talked about the fact that... Uh, Training has been intense this week, as it should be. There's a lot of intensity today. You say that. I feel like maybe we lacked that um, on Wednesday. So guys try to try to bring it today, and uh, hopefully we can build on that for our next game. Yeah, I guess it's a good sign. I mean, guys care, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I feel like we left a lot out on the field there, and uh, we could have shown a lot more. So we just want to show it now. Yeah, and um, going into this match now, I, I, you don't want to call anything must win this early in the season, but it's certainly a game you guys want three points. Yeah, I think we want to build off, like I said, our last performance. Um, and uh, yeah, we got to go down to Edmonton. We know we have a big game coming up after them, so we have to take care of business here and then focus on Toronto FC. Yeah, is, uh, you know, that coach called it maybe like the first half of football Fork has ever played that last game. How do you, you want to learn from that, but you also want to kind of burn it and, and move ahead. How do you balance the learning and also looking ahead to the next yeah. match? Yeah, I think you want to put it in the back of your mind, but you still have to watch video and and look at things we could have done better and things we did did bad and we have to build on that because it's important we don't want to make those same mistakes and make sure that half doesn't uh, appear again during the season. Okay. And lastly, j just some uh, challenges in facing uh, Edmonton on Tuesday that you might face. Yeah, they're a tough team. They're sitting a low block. I think we even found it difficult breaking them down last game. So, And uh, it's tough to play over there. We've always struggled and I think struggling is Edmonton in general. So it's an important game and we're going to have to go there and take care of business. Joining us on the Forge Audio Network is Adam Jenkins. He's a play-by-play -play announcer with One Soccer. Uh, and he, he joins us now. Adam, thanks. Oh, thanks for having me. I always love talking CPL. Yeah, we always, when we have these windows of uh, the Canadian Championship, it's always kind of a nice measuring stick for the Canadian Premier League and you know how they match up against Major League Soccer clubs. I Did we learn anything during these uh, matches over the last couple of weeks? In the... In Forge's case specifically, I, I don't know how much stock we can put into what happened last night. They were just beat. Like that is, Bobby Smirniotis called the first half the worst first half in club history. I don't think that's a stretch. They came out, they knew what they needed to do. Uh, we expected, I don't think we expected 10 changes for Wilfred Nancy yesterday, but we knew there's going to be a lot of rotation. Um, and look, you don't want to rub salt in the wounds. It does make it a bit more of a tough pill to swallow, especially when we showed the shot of the one suite and you got one Yama, Kyoto, Johnston, Kamal Miller up there. And you're like, okay, this is, this is not CF Montreal's best team, but they made their home grass, their advantage. And they always do that. Statsaputo is so hard for any team to go into play, regardless of level, uh, whether it's like a MLS cup could be there and it would be, you would give the edge to them because they've just been so dominant there. But the Forge started slow, and before they knew it, Henry made a great stop. I thought that was going to either pick everybody up because it was a flat, low-energy outing from them, but there was just nothing that we saw from Forge at Halifax where that was the best we've seen them, and then a few days later, it was the worst we've seen them. And it was, it was always going to be a tough game, but I don't know that you learned anything from that, good or bad, because when TFC comes to uh, Tim Hortons Field for the Canadian Championship final, which is bizarre to have just been eliminated from one tournament, but you're still up for the Voyager's Cup, it's going to be very different. And and Forge is going to use Tim Hortons Field to their advantage. I think it's going to be a great crowd. I checked Ticketmaster the other day, and it looks like tickets are doing really well. There is still some available. I really think you got to get there if you're in the Greater Toronto Hamilton area. But Forge will look more like themselves in that match, especially knowing it's 90 minutes and the Voyager's Cup is theirs. We've seen them make so much CPL history to be the first CPL side to win the Canadian Championship, I think, is the biggest carrot they can have. You mentioned Tristan Henry. It's not often you can say, you know, a keeper played really well after giving up three goals, but he yes. actually did. I mean, he made some really big saves. That score 
was maybe even a little flattering for Forge, which is mm-hmm. saying a lot. And it it's just you could see the frustration in Coach Bobby after and the players. And I mean, I'm not sure what happened, but in a lot of ways, it's kind of a it's a wake up call, you know, to be able to have maybe your best performance. Well, no, your best performance of the season and then your worst of all time, almost back to back. It's a nice kind of reminder that as dominant as Forge has have been, the parity is increasing every year in the CPL. Um, they're not getting the results they want against MLS clubs. And so there's still some work to do. And you know, Coach Bobby is, you know, as well as I do, I'm sure that he's he's gonna he's gonna make sure that that doesn't happen again, especially when Toronto makes their trip to Tim Morton's field, I would think. Yeah, there was one moment our camera is caught right after Ibrahim's third. They go to the bench and he's he looks at Kit, he's got his hands on his chin, and he just sort of does that like I don't know if sarcastic is the right word, but the the little shake of the head, like we made plans. We started the half well. Like they, they came out on the front foot, which is exactly what they needed to do in the first half. Right. And then <laughs> Matko Mihailovic puts in, or Miliev, excuse me, puts in the best cross of the day from the set piece. And they were just beat again by the same guy. Um, yeah, it, it, it was one, it was tough. To be honest, I was a little disappointed in the players, just body language. I think at one point uh, there was 15, 20 minutes in, and CF Montreal was dominating possession so much and, and not even in a um, or just like, you can have the ball. We'll, we'll just, we'll defend because they weren't, they were, they had their struggles there too. Um, but Emery Walsh has hands on his hips and the body language just looked tired and defeated. And that was like 20 minutes in the match. And I think when you, you go down so quick to be fair, the second goal comes when Matusil is out, he was a massive loss to go down so early. Um, and, and Montreal did have the the numbers advantage and it, before they could even get uh, Malik into the match, there was a second one against them. So it, it was just, uh, it was uncharacteristic, I think, of them. The the body language, the energy levels, and, and Tristan Henry for as good as he was doing his best to keep the, keep the boys in it, it was just a tough night. And I think that's all it comes down to, tough night at the office. Yeah, yeah, I guess it's a, that's a good way to put it. So as we go forward now, Forge obviously depleted on defense. That's been the story all season for them, and it got even worse, if that's possible, with uh, Matusalas. So... What's interesting, though, is defending hasn't really been a weak point for Forge, not in league play anyway. They've actually, guys have stepped in, playing out of position, and they've been able to kind of fill those holes. It's the attack that's looked inconsistent, which is not something we're used to seeing with Forge. Um, you know, the creativity is there, the buildup is is there, but that final third, that final touch in the final third just has been uh, lacking. It, it came out against Halifax, and then it was lacking again. What do you make of the inconsistencies um, just up front with that? that final extra touch just hasn't been there. Yeah. It's tough because we haven't seen forge with everyone available. And I think they're still so different. Having said that, um, Taron Campbell, when he gets to be an out and out number nine and play in that position, he's different. And if there was a way that they could have the CS and Campbell together, and be able to make some adjustments as the match goes on. I still think that's the best way forward for them. Tristan Borges will tell you he's not happy with where his plays at because he has more to offer. And it's still, the club's still trying to build this particular season's chemistry. And then when you have, like, I cannot wait to see Ashnod Janssen, Becker, and Hijab Rapur together more often. And then you have you have the the depth in terms of, do you want to start Schwanier today? Do you want to start Welshman today? Do you want to start Borges today? And then that is a very particular group of players who are similar in, in skill set with the exception of Welshman not quite having the pace of the other two. It's just, and, and you're missing so many, like it's a different team when you have more speed and grand. It's a different team when Kristen's there not letting anything behind him. And I, I thought it was a little bit funny and one of the best chances that Forge had yesterday and not to, to stay on the defeat for too long. It was the final minute or two of the first half where Ashton Odi was playing, was attacking. He was just somehow found himself up after set piece and he got it. He got aggressive, but he picked his moment as he always does. And he had one of the best scoring chances and he was the deepest lying player on the pitch. So he, he makes a difference when he can play a little bit more advanced. Um, I'm, I'm still not convinced like Becker is, fully over what what had kept him out for a match and a half. I think he, he just there's something quite not right with him. Mm. Um, and it, it just hasn't been Bobby's team in the way Bobby wants to play them yet. And 
now with the exception of the final and you would love almost if that was <laughs> if we could delay that another month to get some players healthy but their their season is the CPL now and they can stay in the race which they will even if things go wrong which I can't imagine a world where things go terribly wrong for Forge they're going to be in the hunt to the very end and then you give Forge uh, two semifinals two legged tie home and away and then a, a one match winner take off final I'm you still can't take them out whether you're a Forge fan or whether you're uh, a York United fan that doesn't want to see them in the playoffs again they're they're going to be there they're that strong and we're still waiting for the announcement of what the the extra berth for the Canadian Premier League and the new um, CONCACAF Champions League format will be so of course they want to contend for what would be the CPL's version of the Supporters Shield but assuming that the carrot or the reward for the team that wins the North Star Shield this season Forge can do it for a third time. They can be right back in continental competition again, and they'll have the added benefit of just playing Cruz Azul this season and being able to to raise the stakes again. So they're going to be fine. Where where I boil that down to, we haven't seen Forge at their best, and you don't want to make excuses. Bobby Smirniotis, it's Ladopoulos. They don't want to make it either. You, the players don't want to hear them, but ultimately they're playing a little bit shorthanded, and, and that's going to be the case for them. Yeah, it's, you know, the old saying in sports where things are never as bad or as good as they seem. I mean, that you couldn't have had two better examples in Forge's last two games. And Bobby said it's, we're almost in going into Edmonton um, or playing Edmonton next. They He essentially called it a must win game. So uh, you can assume he's going to have his guys ready for that. And then for Toronto, uh, Adam Jenkins, I know you're doing a lot of work. You're doing a lot of different things. Uh, anywhere we can see you this week. Uh, what are you up to? I'll have a couple of days off um, and then back in the CPL for a couple of matches. We have the Canadian men's and women's national teams coming up. So looking forward to those as well. The friendly, especially the, the women in Korea at BMO is going to be a great time. Mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to that, especially with how big their summer is. So it, uh, it's, r- ironically, this is one of the, the low points in, in, in my week in terms of scheduling. So I get a bit of time off to prepare for just a couple CPL matches this weekend. But if it's on one soccer, I'm around there somewhere. And then at Adam K. Jenkins on Twitter. Awesome. Adam Jenkins, one of the best voices in Canadian soccer, by the way. I just want to throw that out there. I'm jealous. Appreciate that. As a former that radio is my guy. university university uh, education paying off. That's yes. always good to hear. As a former radio guy, I'm very, very jealous of that voice. All right, Adam, thanks so much for doing this. Cheers. Anytime. All right. That's going to do it for the uh, Focus on Forge this week. Keep it locked onto the Forge Audio Network. You can can subscribe anywhere you get your podcasts. You can also subscribe on YouTube and get all the Forge content you need on social media and on the official website of Forge FC. Until next time, I'm Anthony Urcioli. We'll talk to you soon. Mighty, mighty boy.